Chairman Schiff, thank you for joining us uh, this morning. Thanks, George. Uh, you know, the biggest news from Robert Mueller so far is that there are no new indictments for that underlying any cooperation and conspiracy with the Russians to interfere in our elections. And we're already seeing Rudy Giuliani uh, come out with a tweet yesterday about that, citing you. He said your previous statement saying there is significant evidence of collusion involving the Trump campaign. I trust he, Adam Schiff, is relieved there is no collusion, and I hope he will apologize for his mistake. We all make them. The real virtue is to admit it. It would help us heal. You can apologize? I think Mr. Giuliani would be wise uh, to wait until the report is made public before making any pronouncements about vindication. Uh, and likewise, people should wait to determine just how incriminating it is. Uh, we know that the special counsel was not permitted to indict a sitting president. Uh, and we ought to see what evidence uh, he produced, both on the issue of conspiracy as well as on the issue of obstruction of justice. Uh, so Mr. Giuliani would be wise to do something he has rarely done, and that is wait till we see the facts. You have said, though, in the past there was significant evidence of collusion. How do you square that with Robert Mueller's decision not to indict anyone? And there is significant evidence of collusion, and we've set that out uh, time and time again from the secret meetings in Trump Tower to the conversations between Flynn, the Russian ambassador, to the providing of polling data to uh, someone linked to Russian intelligence and Stone's conversation with WikiLeaks and the GRU through Lucifer 2. Uh, no, that's true. And as I pointed out on your show many times, there is a difference between compelling evidence of collusion and whether the special counsel concludes that he can prove beyond a reasonable doubt, the criminal charge of conspiracy. And I've, as I've said before, George, I leave that decision to Bob Mueller, and I have full confidence in him. Uh, and I think, frankly, the country owes Bob Mueller a debt of gratitude for conducting the investigation as professionally as he has. Uh, so I uh, have trust in his prosecutorial judgment, but that doesn't mean, of course, that there isn't compelling and incriminating evidence that should be shared with the American people. What you're seeing some of the president's allies already say is that this is vindication for the president. Well, they've been saying with each indictment that uh, it's a uh, vindication uh, that uh, now about six people close to the president have been indicted. That hardly looks like vindication to me. But again, let's see what the report has to say. If they're so confident uh, that the report is going to exonerate them, they should fight to make that report and the underlying evidence uh, public and available to Congress. But I suspect uh, that we'll find those words of transparency to prove hollow, that in fact they will fight to make sure that Congress doesn't get this underlying evidence. But we are going to take it as far as necessary to make sure that we do. We have an independent obligation uh, to share the facts with the American people. Uh, we in the Intelligence Committee have a particular obligation to determine whether there is evidence that the president may be compromised in any way, whether that is criminal or not. And, of course, there are indications that he was pursuing money in Russia through Tump Tower and other uh, potential real estate uh, that could be deeply compromising. You say you're going to take it as far as necessary. That means subpoena first, then sue? Uh, it means uh, make the request. If the request is denied, subpoena. If the subpoenas are denied, we will haul people before the Congress. Uh, and yes, we will uh, prosecute in court uh, as necessary to get this information. And, you know, I'll say this. Uh, I think that Neil Katyal's uh, uh, prognostication is quite correct. We will win that litigation. Why are you the so Justice sure? Department will be, well, because uh, how do you make the cases the Justice Department that after providing 880,000 pages of discovery to a Republican Congress in answer to subpoenas, that somehow you're precluded from providing that information to Congress in the Trump investigation? Uh, when likewise in the Clinton investigation, um, there were no indictments uh, for Ron Rosenstein or others to say it's our policy not to share information with those not indicted. Uh, they should explain that to uh, Bruce Orr or Andy McCabe or Peter Strzok or Lisa Page or countless others, Hillary Clinton, uh, for whom they provided hundreds of thousands of pages of information to Congress, much of it made public. So I would hate to defend that double standard in court, and if they try, they'll not only lose, but they will damage any reputation for impartiality. So I think they need to be transparent, and I hope they recognize that. You also asked Robert Mueller to examine transcripts of Donald Trump Jr., Eric Prince, Jared Kushner for possible false statements. No charges there either. Surprised? Uh, I don't know. Uh, that's a difficult charge to prove. Uh, when we release the transcripts, people can make their own judgment about how truthful or forthcoming they were. Um, but as I said at the time, I wanted the special counsel to be able to review the transcripts, not just for the purpose of determining whether people lied to us, as indeed people did, uh, but also uh, what evidence they show on the central issues that he was investigating. There's no public evidence that Robert Mueller even interviewed 
Don Jr. We know he didn't interview the president. Mistake? Uh, yes, uh, I think, uh, and I've said this all along, it was a mistake to rely on written responses by the president. Uh, that's generally more what the lawyer has to say than what the individual has to say. Uh, I can certainly understand why the lawyers like Giuliani were fighting this, because uh, the president is someone who seems pathologically incapable of telling the truth uh, for long periods of time. But nonetheless, uh, if you really do want the truth, you need to put people under oath, uh, and that should have been done. Uh, but the special counsel may have made the decision that as he could not indict a sitting president on the obstruction issue, uh, as it would draw out his investigation, uh, that that didn't make sense. And one other point uh, in terms of the timing of this report, uh, George, which I think is significant, and that is this report has come out so far in advance of the election that the contents can be made public, that the public can have that access to information without violating any policy about disclosure prior to an election, and that's very important. You mentioned that the criminal investigation was only one part of Robert Mueller's job. He also took over the counterintelligence investigation into Russian interference as well. I, I was a, a little puzzled that the speaker is ruling out any uh, classified briefing about that counterintelligence investigation. Isn't that the normal course of business for your committee and the so-called Gang of Eight? There may be a time down the road uh, with respect to specific uh, classified information that goes to a source or method uh, where they would want to brief us on that. But I think what the speaker is saying, and I completely agree, is do not think you can bury this report. Uh, do not think you can bury the evidence in secret by briefing eight people in Congress and say we've discharged our responsibility. That's not going to cut it. Uh, so it is essential that the report be made completely public. Uh, and uh, the reservations that you've mentioned, the legal issues. Uh, one thing is abundantly clear about the special counsel regulations, and that is the attorney general has the discretion to make it completely public. Uh, and if he's going to live up to his words that he will do so consistent with law and policy, that means making it all public. So I think the speaker is quite right. Uh, there are key counterintelligence concerns that we have as a committee, the intelligence committee. And remember, this began as a counterintelligence investigation, not a criminal one. And in our committee, it remains a counterintelligence investigation. We need to be able to see any evidence that this president or people around him may be compromised by a foreign power. Uh, and we, of course, seen all kinds of disturbing uh, indications that this president has a relationship with Putin that is very difficult to justify or explain. You, you mentioned, you told the San Francisco Chronicle on Friday, if there's no bombshell, there's no impeachment. Does no new indictments qualify as no bombshell? Uh, not necessarily, because again, George, as you pointed out, they can't indict the president. Uh, that's their policy. And therefore, there could be overwhelming evidence on the obstruction issue, and I don't know that that's the case. But if there were overwhelming evidence uh, of criminality on the president's part, then the Congress would need to consider uh, that remedy if indictment is foreclosed. So it's really too early to make those judgments. Uh, we need to see the, the report, and then I think we'll all have a factual basis to discuss what does this mean for the American people? What risks are we running with this president? Uh, what steps does Congress need to take to protect the country? Uh, but in the absence of those facts, those judgments are impossible to make. As you know, some of your Republican colleagues are saying that by continuing this investigation after Mueller is done, you're moving the goalposts. Uh, the investigation is a criminal investigation. Uh, Congress's responsibility is very different, and that is, it's our responsibility to tell the American people these are the facts, this is what your president has done, this is what his key uh, campaign and appointees have done, uh, these are the issues that we need to take action on, this is potential compromise, there is evidence, for example, quite in the public realm, that the president sought to make money from the Russians, sought the Kremlin's help to make money during the presidential campaign while denying business ties with the Russians. That is obviously deeply compromising, and if it's this president's view that he still wants to build that tower uh, when he is out of office, that may further compromise his policy towards Putin, towards Russia, and other things. It's our duty to expose that and take corrective action. Chairman Schiff, thanks for your time this morning. Thanks, George.